I want to share something today that came to me again this morning when I was out on my three mile walk. <clears throat> I do a lot of praying while I'm walking and a lot of reflecting. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, I don't even know how to explain this, what's going on in my head, but. When you have somebody, or if you are somebody, who spends a lot of time and effort building up your empire to where you have to have, well, let's just put it this way, you're not pleased with yourself unless, unless you have people looking up to you and you're doing this or you're attempting to have people look up to you by having a great paying job nothing wrong with having a good paying job but if this is your identity if this is where you base your self-worth then this is why I'm putting out this video <clears throat> If you have to have the nice car, the nicest car, the, the best body, the nicest clothes, if you have to have, you know, just a, this amazing house and your lawn is manicured and, you know, you have all these things that you, you base your worth on then <clears throat> I pray for you. I pray for you because the late Rich Mullins, who was a, um, a Christian musician back in the 80s, I think, <clears throat> he, one of, the, one of the things that he had that was so amazing, um, I was watching a video on him, he said he asked the Lord for wonder. And that has been, I mean, it really kind of hit me this morning on my walk. Wonder is one of the greatest gifts God can ever give you. Because when you have wonder, when you can sit out in the evening or at night and look up in the sky and see countless amounts of stars, and then you sit and you start to wonder, these, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm watching this hummingbird. It's uh, cautiously coming into the, to the feeder. And, you know, it's, it's, again, it's amazing to me how fast their wings go. They sound like little helicopters coming in. But, <clears throat> again, you, you look up into the sky, you look up into the stars, and you start to wonder, how big is that universe? How big are these stars? How big is our galaxy? And you come to, you know, you, you maybe research it and find out that you're, you're living in a galaxy that's pretty small and a solar system that's actually pretty small and a star that keeps it warm and gives it light that's small in comparison to other stars. And you start to wonder. And how vast it is, how big it is. And then you start to wonder, well, if God is the creator of this, all of this, then he's bigger. He's bigger than his creation. So when you look at this, the, the, the fact that the universe, it's ever expanding, it never stops. It can't stop because if it came to a wall, what's on the other side? And you think about this, and then you think about the fact that the creator holds this in the palm of his hand. Just how big is God? And then how small is God? When you think about 
as huge as the universe is, how big and how vast it is. And then you, you look at mankind, you know, zoom in from the vastness of the universe and zoom in down um, onto the earth and to the 8 billion people on the planet and then zoom in on one person and just how tiny that person is. And the fact that that tiny person is huge compared to an ant. <laughs> um, so I guess what I'm saying is the, the, the vastness of creation, it's, it's ever expanding in both directions. It, if you get to the smallest thing, there's something smaller that made it up. It's just, it's crazy. And so when you can take all that and just kind of ponder on it for a little while, it's called wonder. Ponder on stuff like that. Ponder on the, the leaves, how the leaves of a tree are made, what they're made up of. Ponder on how many cells you have in your eyeball. Just ponder on these things. Wonder. then you can see just how tiny you really are, regardless of how big you build your empire. You're still tiny. <clears throat> and what's the beauty of all this? The beauty of it for me is that, see if I can explain this one. The very God that holds all of it in the palm of his hand left paradise in heaven and came down here and was born in a stinky barnyard. In the poor man's zone. He completely humbled himself. That doesn't make you wonder. God of the universe humbled himself enough to do what was necessary to spend forever with you. And he seeks out a personal relationship with you. And so if you can stop basing your identity and your worth and your value on what everyone else thinks about you, And start basing your value and your worth on the one that matters most is nailed to a cross for you. Wonder about that for a little while. If you want to make life easy on yourself, if you want to live a simple life, then stop building your empire. And work on being a part of God's empire. You see, we're given a, a command by Jesus in Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6. He says, don't worry about all that stuff. Stop worrying about stuff. Put your treasure in what matters most. And that's in heaven. That's in your heavenly things. That's where your treasure needs to be. And here's, you know, a great command that we push off to the side. The Lord said to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So if you seek to understand his righteousness, you'll, you should come to the understanding that your righteousness is worthless and his righteousness being imputed to you is the most important because without his righteousness you don't get to experience him and his paradise you see hummingbirds <laughs> um, but he says seek first the kingdom of God and to me that means that we should seek to understand and pursue 
what the kingdom of God is and who we are in this kingdom. And then you can start to understand your value and your worth. That it's based on what God says about you. It's based on him going to the limit, going to the, the, the greatest, performing the greatest sacrifice that could ever be performed to be with you, to be with you. You are his inheritance. You want to live simple? You want to stop being all stressed out? You want to stop killing yourself? Raising your blood pressure? And all that stuff? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything will be added to you that you need. And I pray, and pray for yourself, that the Lord would bless you with wonder. So that when you look out at the creation, at his creation, you remain in awe of it. You're blown away by it. Because when you look at his creation, you'll see this in Romans chapter 1. When you look seriously with wonder into his creation, you see him. And that, my friends, is a simple life. You don't have to impress anybody else. You live for him. And you don't care what other people think about you. The only thing I want people to say about me when they go to my funeral, the only thing I really want to hear, you know, that, that I would want to hear said about me is that man had integrity. He loved God. And he loved people. That's it. I want people to remember me for helping others and loving others. But most of all, that I love God. And the beauty of his creation. It's one of the things I remember about my dad. He would stand in awe. He would st stand up on top of a mountain in awe of the vastness, the beauty of God's creation. He really appreciated God's creation. And that's a good, that's a gift. That's a great gift to have. If, if you're spending your life trying to impress those around you and trying to be in control of everything, That's called insecurity. That's called insecurity. And there's a lot of bad traits that come with being insecure. A lot of them. A lot of bad traits. A lot of bad attributes. When you're insecure. So, come to know Jesus pursue him, pursue wonder and let those bad attributes and that that insecurity melt away. Just let it melt away. Just keep getting to know him. Find your true worth and your true value. Because <clears throat> it won't be in what others think about you. So God bless y'all. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the next one.